Good evening. So nice for you to drop in again. Um, these are exciting times that we live in, and uh, today is one of those days. We've been trying to introduce you to Dr. T. Lapsing Rampa for some time now, and today is somewhat appropriate. Um, we hope you enjoy your summer, and um, again, it's really nice that you stop your activities to come and say good evening to us, or good morning, whichever time zone that you're in. My guest is Barbara McGuire. Uh, really need, uh, doesn't need an introduction. You're also familiar with her, and I'm yeah. so happy that you came. Thank you. To do this show with Thank us. You. Um, you might notice I have an empty bowl sitting on the middle <laughs> here as my centerpiece. Um, it appears to be empty, but sooner or later I have a kitty that stays in there, and um, you've met her. Her name is Miss E.T., and whenever she decides, she will come and join us, I think. Um, you know, normally we ask, how did we meet? Uh, and since we all know how we met, how about we recap how we got acquainted with Dr. Lapsang Vampa that we talk about so often. So you want to start okay, us off? Um, I read his books about almost 30 years ago now. I think it's been 28 years. Um, and I was very fascinated, and at the time, I didn't know a whole lot about psychic phenomena and everything, so he, he really interested me. Uh, and I uh, studied a few things that he would, uh, he, he give uh, some lessons in his book, and was, it was able to um, actually do the, you know, what he taught. So um, it's been a long time relationship with me, with uh, Dr. Rampa, so. I feel real honored to do the show today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, it's, it's, it's very special. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, like we explained to the friends, these shows are somewhat guided. And lots of times we sit here and we talk about something and poop. Um, either his teachings or his name, some kind of way, it always pops in there. You That's know? right. That's and right. then we say, well, we're going to explain this to you another time. So today is the day. Well, my getting acquainted with him was a little different, and mm -hmm. it wasn't until 1997 when I wrote my book. Um, I had never heard of Lapsing Rampa before. Um, I had told a story or a vision type thing, you know, that I had talked about in my book. Um, actually, that's what I was doing, and my friend Monica sent me well, it was about this stick. It was called Dedicated to, to Humanity, and she mailed it to me. And when I opened it and I looked at it, and it had actual drawings in there that I had just talked about in my book, you know. And I don't read a lot. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of in awe how something in my head could be you know, right. in, this, in this leaflet. So not to cloud my own thinking. I decided I'm just going to give it a rest, and then when I went on my book tour, I made it a point to read all the books he ever wrote, all 19 of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. Here's, a, here's a little story before we get into, the, into his life and things. Um, some of you know that in 1998, when I was on my trip, I ran into, well, I thought it was four tornadoes, but I checked my notes, it was actually five. And it, at the last tornado, that's the story I want to share with you, was in Lamar, Colorado. We had stopped at this truck stop, and it wasn't really a tornado area, but it went from daylight to <laughs> midnight in, in, like, it dropped like 30 degrees in like two minutes. Right. And this tornado is aiming straight for this truck stop that we, uh, we were at. And uh, so we asked, of course, we asked the people about, uh, do you have an escape route or what? We didn't know, you know. And they said, no, we don't know what to do. So we decided, the young lady, Jennifer, was me. We just decided to get away from the windows and... Hope for the best. Hope for the best <laughs> and say, here we are, you know, do something. And right about then, three truckers came into the front door. And the one, I remember him to be a really tall gentleman, and he walked straight to the booth where Jennifer and I were sitting, and he got right in my face, I have to illustrate that a little bit. And he said, 
what are you doing with beams coming out of your eyes? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. And then, now this is a quote. And then he said, you know what really pisses me off? And I said, no. <laughs> he said, I was moving and they lost all my, my rumpa books. And I said, well, that's not a problem. And I took him by the hand and we ran <laughs> out in the storm. The hail was about this big around. <laughs> And we had water to our ankles, and um, I reached inside of my carpet, that's the RV, and I took a whole, however many I could get in the hand, in my hand, and I said to him, here. And then I saw him one time after that, and that was the end of it. So in my mind, I'm thinking, why did I do this? Because the books are out of print. That's right. You can't find them any, very anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I was a little upset with myself in my own way. Then the next day, when I got to Florence, Colorado, to this bookstore, my friend Martin, he had a paper bag, a regular paper sack, and he said, I have something for you. And he hands me this paper sack, and in it was all the Lobsing Rumpa books that I had given the trucker, and along with it was a prayer wheel. It's a little sick, I don't know what happened to it. And of course, I had never seen a prayer wheel, and for what I understand, is like a rosary, you know, when you count the beads? Mm -hmm. To keep track of how many times you said a prayer. From what I understand, the prayer wheel is similar to that. So every time, I can't do it like that. So every time you turn it, one prayer will have been said. That's right. And from what I understand, this thing goes really quick and round and around. That's right. Did I tell that right? Um, you did. Uh -huh. okay. The chant, they chant their prayer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then yeah, it works. Oh, hey, I'm doing it. The energy is mm -hmm. supposed to be very nice. Mm -hmm. And that was included with the replacements of the Rampa books. And so that's my story. And maybe we should address my health for a minute. Yes, well, I think people are probably interested in that yeah. now. That's a, that's a good time. If you remember, we had shared that I had a, a problem in my neck, and that was six weeks ago at the time of this taping, mm -hmm. and today is what? May? May 10th. 10th. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So for the last six weeks, I really couldn't breathe so well, and I couldn't eat so well. It, a lot of tests was done, but a lot of options, you know, were canceled because it wasn't going to work. And so, by theory, I thought that if we pulled this out of the bones, you know, they would mm -hmm. take care of it. And um, sure enough, um, a chiropractor in town um, did just that, and so. It's from behind the bone, and I'm breathing, and I think my experience is over. I'm sure it's somebody's lesson, mm -hmm. not necessarily mine. That's right. And uh, but we're a lot better, and so I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, you're you're looking a lot better. Mm -hmm. So I haven't said that, and then one more thing, Albert. Since today, when I picked up the snack tray, they donated a. Um, a beautiful orchid to our second. Yes, because they it's wonderful. Said that would look yeah. so nice with it. So thank you, Albert. As a matter of fact, it goes with the saffron robe. It if you does. Think it. Uh huh. We were wondering about where we were going to get that color. Remember? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we should get to Dr. Rampa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should we go backwards? Yes. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go backwards in time here. If you hear a little noise, that's Miss E.T. roaming around. <laughs> there is a website dedicated to Dr. Rampa, and um, what that does is all the people that is acquainted with his teaching or things like that, um, they talk to each other worldwide. And from that list of things, we ended up getting um, some email with some rather interesting stuff. Yes, we had a lot of interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. You forgot your glasses. Yes, I did. 
Okay, so I'll take that away for <laughs> I <here>. cannot see. <laughs> for a minute. From what I understand, this came from Australia, and it, it, it was an article that refreshed people's memory of some of the predictions that Dr. Rampa made. In 1981, right before he passed. Yes. Uh -huh. Some of these things have happened already, and others, uh, is, they compared with Nostradamus and Mother Shipton, yes, yeah, so and so. I really don't. Shipton, I'm sorry. Shipton, that's right. By Mother Shipton, and I don't know who that is. And I don't either. I'm, I have not heard of her before, mm -hmm. but obviously she was an oracle of some kind. About the same time Nostradamus mm -hmm. uh, was, you know, on this earth plane. So we can't give you any details on that. Some of the things he talks about here is that the time period that we are in right this minute at the time of this taping, mm -hmm. which is May, um, that when Mars would be the closest to the Earth and creates a window between March and July of 1999, he talks about the war in Yugoslavia, he talks about conflicts with the Chinese, um, when this arrived, of course, the connection hadn't been made. That's right. And today, of course, we have a better idea how this might unfold. Um, we talked about diseases, mm -hmm. which AIDS could be. Definitely. Uh, which AIDS could be part of it. And here it says, in early 1999, a straight, uh, a strange event occurs in the heavens. The red star will appear, which will t later turn blue. And that is also where the Bible makes reference to in Acts 2, verse 19. And so it's all in line with... All the predictions are coming sort of to a head. <laughs> yeah, of, of everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So since we're going backwards, Dr. Rampa had a lot of problems in his lifetime um, because he always insisted that everything he said was the truth. That's right. Mm -hmm. As phenomenal as it sounded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the media was giving him a very hard time. Yes, he had the, oh, a lot of stress with the media. They weren't kind to him at all. So this is the media, so hopefully we can... <laughs> we can help him out a little bit. We can help out yeah. a little bit today. Okay. Um, we'll stop here in time, and now we will go to the beginning. Okay. So would you like to refresh our memory how it all started? Well, he was uh, born in Tibet, and he was born on a Tuesday, and mm -hmm. in, in Tibet they had... They usually name their children the day they were born. So he was Tuesday, Lob Singh Rampa. Mm -hmm. That's what the T stands for. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was uh, sort of <coughs> slated to go to the mon to to the lamas, to the monks uh, in Tibet, and uh, put him. They took him when he was, I think, seven. Mm -hmm. six, he came from six a fairly wealthy seven. family. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. He did, and he wasn't sure he wanted to do this, mm -hmm. but he didn't have a choice. And they took him to the, to the, uh, well, monastery, and um, he had to stay out there for three or four days outside. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't let him in. They didn't talk to him. They just said, you know, this is one of the tests to get in. And so he passed the test, and he went in, and he was very intelligent, learned very quickly, and was quite psychic. But they have the way when they pick a special person like Lop Singh to do things, they um, actually opened his third eye by putting a sliver of wood in and whatever they do to open it. So they actually opened his third eye a little more than, in, they did it faster than it would have taken him to do it by himself. Mm -hmm. I'd like to in, in inject here something. Uh, one of the reasons, um, 
I, I believe it had been decided uh, so in, in that order is because why I, I don't remember how many years old he was, but according to his astrological chart, that's right. It, it stated this is what who he was and what he was supposed to do. And I think um, that's why. Yes, he, uh, he, yeah, and sometimes he thought he, he wouldn't going to live up to it. Exactly. But, you know, we always have self-doubt, but he did live up to what they wanted him to do, and he became a medical doctor. He did. Um, a, you know, very psychic medical doctor. And it seems that the lamas there knew many years before the Chinese came mm -hmm. the, uh, to take over Tibet that they were going to do this. So they copied all their books and all their wisdoms and all their ancient knowledge on other books and hid them in caves so that the communists wouldn't get to them and destroy them. So I'm sure they're still there someplace waiting for the communists to kind of let go so they can bring these wisdoms back out. Um, Excuse me. He knew that he was going to have a really tough time when the communists came. And he saw many of his countrymen killed and tortured, and he also was tortured. And he got out. It wasn't he? Uh, they thought he was dead, and they sort of threw him on a pile of bodies. Yes, and did. and he he hid there till he was able to crawl away because he was very badly uh, tortured. Uh, and his physical body was then dying. Mm -hmm. And he was a Tibetan. And had a you know a, kind of a small frail body. Um, the monks, the lamas, took him and um, told him that they would find a suitable body for him to finish out his lifetime because he had work still work to do. So, uh, do you want to? The proper word for that is transmutation. Yes, I guess you could call it transmutation. Uh huh. We call it, uh, people might know it more by being a walk-in now, since Ruth Montgomery's books of the walk-in. Yeah, that, that, might, that might be. But he better. was the first walk-in I ever heard of, mm -hmm. at least, what, 25, 30 years before Ruth Montgomery wrote her book about walk-ins. He had a wonderful relationship with cats. Oh, yeah. And I mm -hmm. think that's why Miss E.T. Um, is the centerpiece again here. Uh, he got a lot of comfort from cats. He got a lot of... Um, he was a very um, psychic, so he could talk to the cats, and they talked mm -hmm. to him, and and they had a wonderful relationship. They were always honest with him mm -hmm. and um, loving and caring towards him. So It's, o it's almost like he, he recognized them as being uh, a different species. That's right. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. And, and so then, then he went from he went from there to England. Yes, they got him to England. He had a, he always had he wasn't very fond of immigration either. No. Because mm -hmm. every no. time he legally immigrated somewhere, he had trouble. Didn't work out. <laughs> he had yeah. trouble. <laughs> yeah, I think trouble just followed the poor thing mm -hmm. around. But he had been told at a very young age that he was going to have a very troubled life because he, knew he was this. on his mission. Yeah, mm -hmm. he knew this. Mm -hmm. And so then he, did, then they transferred him into. They they found a suitable body for mm -hmm. him, which was an Englishman, mm -hmm. um, an older Englishman. I think he was in his fifties when he mm -hmm. when he you know, transferred mm -hmm. into him. And they switched. They, his soul walked into the Englishman's, and the Englishman's soul walked out and was allowed to go to the other side, which was his desire because he was tired of living and he didn't mm -hmm. want to be here. So Lob Singh kind of went into this body, and what a shock, <laughs> you yeah, know, can you imagine? to go from mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, the philosophy he had and everything to this English person who... Mm -hmm. Nothing against English people, but I mean straight laced, and you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had to bring his consciousness around. To he knew who he was. He did know who he was, but he still had to bring all this through this uh, English 
uh, Caucasian physical body, mm -hmm. which was very, very different from where he had been. Yeah, talking about culture shock, I mean, sometimes I have problems, <laughs> but can you imagine that being in a, a totally different body structure and everything? That's right. And, and I want to say something here, too. Um, that is really acceptable because the person, the, the English person, he did um, agree to this? Oh, he agreed. He had to agree. Um, any walk-in, from what I understand, have to agree mm -hmm. to allow the, um, the soul to leave that body and then for another soul to come in. Um, it has to be a total an agreement and they have to be willing to go through with it. So, so he lived in, in the, well, he got odd jobs, and uh, I remember I, I was reading that sometimes to get from one place to another, he, he worked for, um, he, he rented himself out to transport cars to the country. Mm -hmm. uh, he would pick up a car, let's say, in New York and drive it to Chicago and pick up another one and, and so mm -hmm. on and so on because money, money was, a, you know, Quite a, problem. A, a need, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He needed to, do, and, and he also acquired a wife while he was <laughs> from the Englishman, yeah, which but, yeah. for a Tibetan Lama was quite a change. But she seemed to be a very um, understanding, um, kind soul. Mm -hmm. And she just, uh, they of course lived like brother and sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, really garnered quite a bit of knowledge and uh, understanding from him, so. Mm -hmm. Then there was a daughter also, a young lady that they mm -hmm. ad adopted them? No? Yes, uh-huh, mm -hmm. yeah. And, they, and then, of course, there were cats. Well, they um, always had Miss their Cleopatra, cats. Miss Cleopatra mm -hmm. uh, was, was one of them. And um, then as time went on, Dr. Rampa wrote all these books. Yes, he started writing his books, which everybody I guess in the media thought was insanity for a while because they couldn't, they just couldn't understand uh, what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. But they found out later on that uh, when they asked some of the Tibetans about some of the things that he said, that he absolutely was right on about the life that he lived in mm -hmm. Tibet. Um, a lot of people don't know that the way they dispose of the bodies in Tibet is that they they throw them down into a place where their bones are going to, mm -hmm. you know, break apart and then they let the vultures finish that off and that's because they don't have much much room there, can't have a b big bunch of graveyards and stuff. So they, they believe in returning that body back to nature and a lot of people didn't know that and he used to tell people that it was true. And then uh, at a very early age, um, you know, I can't pronounce his master which, which was a teacher and a person you hold in high esteem. I uh, kind of call it, it's Ming Yardanda. Ming Yardanda. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Ming we, we, Before we mutilate it, let's just, um, <laughs> you pronounce it the way you like it when you read the book. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ming Yardanda, I believe, is what. That's pretty close, yeah. Pretty close to it. Yeah, he was a very mm -hmm. advanced soul, mm -hmm. um, a, lot of, a lot of knowledge, and passed a lot of that on to him. And then when he passed away, of course, he was still with Lob Singh, mm -hmm. so. And he took him to what later he described in the book, um, Cave of the Ancients? Yes. Mm -hmm. We went into that a little bit when we were doing the... Um, the time travel. That's right. The time traveling mm -hmm. piece. Because mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. they had time uh, traveling equipment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was uh, uh, from a past civilization thousands mm -hmm. of years before we think, you know, we were here. It was on the Wingmaker show. That's right, the Wingmakers. Mm -hmm. Because they had time capsules from the future. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he had the capability to, to access the, starts with an A, the, that holds the records, I can't say that word, the archives. Oh, yeah, the archives. Did mm -hmm. I say that yeah, right? Yeah, you said it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, he had knowledge of things past, present, and future, you know, and and we can really see some of this unfold right now. Yes, we can. He's mm -hmm. uh, pretty right on about it, what he's what he was talking about. Yeah. Eventually, he um, it, because physically he was even as an Englishman he wasn't very well, you know. So um, he did. Um, 
he did a lot of writings in you know as as a job, and I think that's how mm -hmm. how that started. And uh, he did find a publisher. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Corky in England, um, Corky Publishing. Yes, they mm -hmm. they publish his books. Mm -hmm. And I can you know I can really Id I identify with that sometimes because my book was written a little out of the ordinary too, uh -huh. you know, yes. and then. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I gave it to a publisher, and every time we saw it, it was not acceptable. So we self-published eventually. But it's still published, and it's out there for people mm -hmm. to get some knowledge from. Some of them you can find on Amazon.com. Uh, if you go to my website, which is listed at the end of the show, it will jump you into the website that's available, and uh, it gives you a list of all the books. It gives you background on Dr. Rampa. Um, out of all the books, which one did you become attached to the most? Mm. Well, I really enjoyed all of them. I can't mm -hmm. say there isn't one that I didn't enjoy. I think what sticks out a lot is The Hermit, mm -hmm. and Cave of the Ancients. Um, those two because they bring in things that are really fascinating about you know the extraterrestrials and um, mm -hmm. uh, the ancient people of course. Mm -hmm. I believe is it is you forever. That's a that is in no print now mm -hmm. and it's it's available. They have it at Barnes and Nobles and places. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the others are really hard to to get to get yeah. sometimes, but. Here, like with everything else, if you're supposed to find it, you will find it. You will, and um, one of the things that in his teachings he he warned about witchcraft, mm -hmm. the occult. Yes, um, almost in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He objected to the greed. Yes, he did. Yes. You know, that we have now. Um, I, I want to say something about that because sometimes I talk to people and they have the idea that just because we're spiritual, we want to be in this um, uh, in the frame of mind that, uh, y you know, that we really don't need anything other than the basics. And I sort of don't think that's what he meant. No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. No. I believe he even made a comment about, you know, that it costs money to mail letters and it costs money to buy papers because people got very demanding. And yes, I can, they did. I can identify They would with write that. to him, ask him mm -hmm. questions, expect him to answer mm -hmm. them, pay the postage, send mm -hmm. any information that they wanted mm -hmm. without realizing that he had to have the energy from the money that they should have sent mm -hmm. him, you know, to do these things for him. I mean, that for them, that's that's no more than anyone should, mm -hmm. you know, ask for. No, there was one instant where a lady demand. I, uh, I'm not sure, but I think it was a lady. She said, mm -hmm. "You are my teacher, and that I demand that you send for me and teach me and things like yeah. that." Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can almost identify with that. I can too. To so mm -hmm. a, a lot of, uh, yeah, definitely people demanding you to do things. N now, you, you see what it was. When you are a llama, people feed you. Mm -hmm. And um, see, I did know a little story about how you eat and think when someone gives you something. Would you, would you remember what that is? I don't think so. Well, that'll give you a chance to call in and refresh our memory. But right. if there was a certain way how they accepted the food to thank the host, you know. Mm -hmm. And so in back then, I mean, he was well taken care of. That's right. Because he was respected as a spiritual um, person. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then in the Western world, of course. He was sort of dumped into it. Mm -hmm. He had to learn how to make his living. How to? Yeah, that was uh, really complicated. Yes, and of course he couldn't be a doctor in this body because he would have to go through mm -hmm. medical school again, and he certainly wasn't able to do that. So, um, yeah, he had a 
really hard time adjusting to the different uh, society that he had found himself in. But he did. And when he started writing his books, that's when he started getting a little more mm -hmm. comfortable, but not, I don't think he was ever real comfortable. No, no, he, no. he, was, he was never comfortable as such. Uh, you know, what we consider wealthy. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I run into that a lot. People think that um, just because you do your work, you have to be wealthy. That doesn't always happen like that. No, it doesn't, no. But at the same token, I don't think he intended to put people in the frame of mind that just because, like I said, just because you're on your path, you have to do without. I really don't There think should that's never what be lack. If, there has to be balance, and there should never be lack. Uh, lack causes you to become unbalanced spiritually because you're always mm -hmm. trying to compensate for something and you're putting your energy towards that lack. So, no, there shouldn't be any lack in, in any type of, of lifestyle that you have. Uh, we're all, we all should be able to have what we need and more if, if that's what we mm -hmm. desire. I don't think there should be such a thing as a poor person. Yeah. His books are written in a real fun way. He talks to his cats. Mm -hmm. um, I like the way he, <laughs> oh, I, it, you know, like when, when I write things, I make up names and, and I spell it the way I want to. And when I have a thought, I just say dot, 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 like that. And, and when I first started reading it, I laughed because it was so human. Mm -hmm. That's the word, mm -hmm. how he he read his books and then of course one makes reference to the other and um, the one called the love saying rumpa story sort of yes. gives a uh -huh. chronicle account of how he uh, of his life how he got from here to here in his journeys mm -hmm. and some of the others are more detailed yes uh -huh. mm -hmm. there's a lot of lessons in each one uh, in a way mm -hmm. you know um, yeah, he was very, very spiritual person, but was forced to, he was actually forced to do things he didn't really want to do, mm -hmm. but he had to do them because he, you know, he came into the Western world and you have to live that way. One of the things he wanted to do was to um, develop auras, aura photography for medical purposes. Yes, he mm -hmm. did. And he, he worked on that for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, well, for, for the friends that don't know what, what that is, I mean, if eventually someone did figure out how to uh, create a, a camera that would actually capture the, the auras. Yeah, and it's called Curlian photography. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and they actually change. Uh, like this one was taken, here you go. This one was taken in 1994. Then this one was taken in 1997. I had just came out of a lecture uh, that day, so my aura was kind of scattered. And, and I think it has to do with heat. Well, yeah, it, does. it has to do with heat and energy mm -hmm. coming from, of course, your body. Mm -hmm. And then the one you're holding was in 1996. And of course, my whole outlook on the world had changed a little bit. And so it's not surprising that I had planets coming out of my head on that one. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. <laughs> but his idea was to, to use this for medical reasons so you could take an aura picture of the body and identify well, they do that to a point. They know that um, they've done it with smokers, you know, and they <clears throat> they know that the circulation isn't as good at the mm -hmm. ends by the color of the aura, and that sometimes they're even blocked out. Mm -hmm. You know, the energy's the blood flow is not getting to them. <clears throat> so actually, they've done a little bit with it, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, psychics have been using auras for many years. Exactly. Yeah. His affiliation with extraterrestrials, um, I think, is it, more intensified as Edgar Casey, for instance. And 
he does explain that being a Lama wasn't really a religious no, it was experience. It was. It's a way of life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They chose to live the way they lived. They chose to do the things they did. And um, it isn't really, it's a philosophy. A that's philosophy, all. that's a better it's word. It's just a philosophy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a good philosophy for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it's wonderful. I think it brings you peace and tranquility and you can be happy with is good. They went into a cave and um, he would he would eat pretty much the same thing. It was, what was it called? Oh, the Sampa. Sampa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much his basic diet. Yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they went to to a cave. And before they got to the cave, they stopped, and there was his first experiment. Uh, I'm sorry, his experiment. experience experiment. with meat and some other foods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the way he described it is that it had been there for, he said, millions of years. And the way it was preserved, and they just mm -hmm. ate some of it because... Yeah, it was sort of... Um, frozen or something mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so he it. had very <laughs> yeah. what we would consider unusual experiences all through his life oh absolutely he saw a yeti mm -hmm. yeah they used to go to this one plateau where they had um, uh, plants and things and roots and herbs that they would gather for their medicines and everything and uh, he saw the yeti and they were supposed to be small Sort of smallish, not 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 giant like our Bigfoot, mm -hmm. uh, and white and very calm, placid creatures, from what he said. But they were a little afraid of man, so they did mm -hmm. it did get out of there as quick as it could. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, he's seen many things. Yeah, and then he and then he wrote it down. Mm -hmm. And it's a total of nineteen of nineteen books. They're very, very enjoyable. You know, it's like Barbara made a comment one time. She says, well, I'm going to look at it. You know, and if it doesn't agree with what I'm thinking, at least I had fun. Do you mm -hmm. remember saying oh, that? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's kind of like that. If you have a chance to read some of his writing, they are just fun. You know, yeah. just fun. E.T. went to sleep, I think. Miss E.T. Yeah, she's e. sleeping. He's sleeping. That's all yeah. Mom. Yeah, he just held his cats in high uh, esteem. I even believe they were, there's two books that supposedly, you know. They wrote. They wrote, <laughs> yeah. And so there's an idea. Um, you get, say hi to the good people. Because he was know. used to the temple cats, too, you know, and that they uh Lamas have temple cats that guard their treasures, mm -hmm. and they're going to be very ferocious when they they are taught to attack the neck, mm -hmm. jump on the shoulders, and I guess they've done that a few times. Mm -hmm. Oh, so they can be pretty sleeping. vicious. Yeah, so he was very, very fond. That's actually how Miss Et got into the Eight Show. Um, originally, we had planned to do this one, uh -huh. and then as sometimes. It just flips. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but she was having such a good time, so we just um, have her be the star twice. Yeah, how's that? That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. She's a, a really special cat anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's sleeping. I'm not sure. But Orca books, they usually have some of his. Some of them. And actually, so do the um, paperback. Oh, I forget the name of it. It's a used bookstore, though. It had, they have some. I've had. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, there's one on uh, Pacific. I've gotten a couple from them. Mm hmm. So you kind of look around a little bit, you can find his books. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, 
my friend Monica and I, we started a program where we are sending his books into the penitentiaries. Good. Huh? Yes, yeah, wonderful. And the Rosancho had a gentleman on the other day where they teach yoga to to change the the, the vibration, the vibration, and the energy of um, places and mm -hmm. things and people, and so. I believe it really does work, and so we have a whole waiting list of names of prisoners that would like to have the Rumpa books as they become available, and then they, they pass them on, and you know, if you can change the consciousness in, of some people, and sometimes we do learn things. Absolutely. It would be wonderful for the consciousness to be raised and it's a good place to start, mm -hmm. um, but there's people here who need them, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it's written so simple that um, after the fourth page, he's really your friend. And, you know, we don't call him Dr. Lapsing Rampa. We talk about, oh, Lapsing. It's like mm -hmm. he's yep. our next door neighbor That's right. part of our lives. That's right. And so. Is she going to drink your coffee? Gonna no. <laughs> Not good. She's today. rooting around. Oh boy. She's not good. T E T. Come come here. Sit. There you go. No, there you go. She says I'm not getting enough attention. And no, she isn't, you know, so. <laughs> We don't know what's going on in her mind. She no, might have this something is to true. say and we're just not intelligent We're not listening to, know to what it. it is, That's you know. right. Mm -hmm. I know that, uh, remember, uh, didn't Lo Singh have an encounter with some vicious dogs once? Yes, he did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But he uh, tuned into them and mm -hmm. calmed them down, and they were, like, really, mm -hmm. like, pussycats after a while when he got through mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. And, and actually, one, one of the books, it gives you a definition of metaphysical terms, mm -hmm. paranormal terms. Um, you can... He shares his information how to do astral projection. That's right. Um, and like I said, he discussed extraterrestrials in details. Mm -hmm. um, made lots of predictions. Yes, he did. I learned to astral travel from his books. Uh, he was the one that taught me how to do that. Conscious astral travel is fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing was he didn't warn me that I might come out the back of my head. So when my <laughs> astral body fell out through the back of my head, it was like a, a trip. It really startled me at first, but now I'm used to it. Well, Barbara, tell us more, because um, well, astral traveling. I've I've um, consciously astral traveled for a long time, and you just go wherever you want to go. And I've traveled mm -hmm. all over the world that way, and mm -hmm. gone to some spiritual planes, and been able to view a few things and bring it back consciously, and it's, it's a very fascinating thing. And I do not believe and will not ever believe that anyone can be lost from their physical body by going out astrally. Mm -hmm. uh, the exactly. silver cord is there, it's attached, it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't believe when people say that they've, they're afraid they're not going to come back. You always come back. Yeah, and he explains all that in detail. Uh -huh, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. because it can be quite an experience, but we do what is called crash land sometimes, you know, when, yes, when your uh -huh. line of thinking is interrupted, you know. That's right, or if someone comes in mm -hmm. and startles you, you can get back in your body. You, come, you can come back too fast, sometimes you can get a headache, mm -hmm. sometimes you're not, you can't move for a little while, mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's a wonderful experience. Everybody astral travels, whether they know it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, as our soul does not want to stay in our body all this, you know, mm -hmm. this entire time we're here. So it, it leaves and um, does whatever it wants to do. Mm -hmm. Feels the freedom and and I know that a lot of that happens with the lady that I'm taking care of. Mm -hmm. uh, she's immobile; she can't do anything. But at night, she's out of that body, and she's she's doing things. So. There's some reprieve, you know. And whether we into it or not, I say that sometimes um, because of the learned behaviors that we have. 
certain things sometimes seem impossible, but they're not. You know, if we just allow ourselves to get in line with what what we're capable of and what it is that we can really do. And um, then you'll also learn that there are no coincidences. Now, I had an interesting experience yesterday. Um, th th there is a lady in Iowa that got hit by lightning twice. And I think, I believe she's related to you. Yes, she's uh -huh. your niece. Uh -huh. Your niece? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, she was having a really hard time with somebody, well, what, whatever it is that was giving her problems. Yeah, uh -huh. and, um, and so I talked to her and this orientation and just all the things that's been happening to us was happening to her. And then later, during the day, uh, I was invited to go somewhere else, and there was another lady that got hit by lightning twice. Oh, boy. So to talk to two people like that in one day. That's I mean, synchronicity for you. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. But as it turned out, we could compare stories and symptoms. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that They were so similar, and that's because so many things are interfering with us on an earth plane right now. Yes, mm -hmm. right. And Dr. Rampa did tell us, you know, about some of these things, so we can sort of learn how to work around that. Yes, we can. We can go, we can work around it. We have to be aware that there's something happening. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're in a state of confusion and you don't know why, uh, it's kind of hard to deal with it unless you know that there's a reason for the state of confusion, which has been happening the last week and a half, at least. So in that wonderful way that he wrote, this wonderful style um, that he had, he, gave, he left us such guidance. Actually, he left us a road map almost, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. So I would encourage all the friends that have never heard a love saying, Rampa, A R A M P A, Rampa. Right. Um, you know, pick up a book, or if you don't have one, if you promise to bring it back, sometimes we'll own them up. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. And it's, it's just a really nice experience. Uh, children, it's easy to read. Children can read them. Uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, somebody. Uh -huh like candlelight, so they aren't too many big words. It's nothing derogatory, nothing too scary. And, no. and out of the ordinary, he was just a very down-to-earth being while he was on an earthly plane. That's right. Even though his soul was so... Yeah. Give me a word. <laughs> well, he was just... Evolved. E yeah, very evolved. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had a lot of gifts and he shared them with everyone. And that's why we called the show a tribute, because people sure gave him a hard time. You they know? did. I mean, the press, they would, they would attack him and they would climb to the windows and demand it. And give him a lot of peace, no. They gave him no respect right. whatsoever. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But that sometimes happens with people. Mm -hmm. Um, whose thoughts are what appears to be different, and maybe they know something. That's right. You know, so when a person tells you a really fantastic story, um, it might turn out later that they was telling you the truth. That's right. Mm -hmm. And he always made sure he said, "This is the truth, whether you like it or not." That's right. <laughs> so in a way, he didn't really care if they liked him or not. That's right. Well, that's the philosophy I think you need to adapt when you're doing things like this because if you worried over everybody who didn't believe you, you mm -hmm. wouldn't say anything and then nothing would get out. So, you know, there are people out there who, if they need what you're saying, they will understand and they will accept it because we, we do tell the truth. Yeah, it's a little, sometimes it sounds like it's very far-fetched and it is because. <laughs> Life is stranger than fiction. Yeah, and, and it came quite a ways. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm just so happy that we are able to do this today. Yes, I know? am too. 
and not to really give you a whole lot of explanations. We just want to pique your interest. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you have access to the computer, again, you can link to Dr. Rampas, uh, one of the web pages that is up, you know, mm -hmm. in, in honor of him. Uh, you can link to that. And uh, you might be surprised who you run into. That's really familiar. That's right. Like that trucker. I never saw him after that. I know. Well, that, that happens to you a lot, though. <laughs> so think of the odds it is. That's right. And then this morning, just this morning, on the news, they explained what a prayer wheel was. That's right. You know, so right. now everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot of synchronicity in your life. A lot of things happen for you the way they should, I guess for all of us, but it seems to stick out a lot with you for some reason. It gets a little <laughs> hectic and then it gets it a does. little scary. It does. But it's moments like that, that you, you know, that we really feel that we, we're doing what we're supposed to regardless right. of how. We're contributing and, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and then we bring kitties to the... <laughs> She's gone again. To the studio, and she found a little place behind us here, so she might not. She might not come back to um, wish you goodbye her today. Bowl, huh? mm -hmm. yeah. We'll see if we can get her back in the bowl. Um, again, I want to thank the friends for just watching this show every week, and and for your feedback that you're giving me, and the changes. Sometimes you ask me to change something or to explain something in more details and we're really happy to do that. I thank you for the mail and the good wishes that when I yeah, when you were not feeling well had my real problem there and um, Olympia people are great. Anchorage people are great and of course I have to include uh, Colorado and this show might go to other places so we should make this a global well well wishing and just keep up the good work and follow your heart and follow your guides. That's right. And if what you tell people doesn't fit in with the agenda, it will tomorrow. That's right. You plant your seeds mm -hmm. and they'll grow. That's true. Do you have any <clears throat> any closing thoughts for the friends? I'm going to try to get E.T. back in the bowl. Well, I think just uh, keeping an open mind as we usually say e. and uh, Read the Rampa books if you would, you know, if you're pulled toward them, and learn some of the lessons he gave to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are very grateful for him having shared this earthly plane. Yes, we are. With us, and uh, we might get together like that one day, and and uh, have other people come forward and share your story, how you did get acquainted. So for today, we wish you. Um, goodbye. Enjoy the rest of your summer. And I'm sorry about E.T. She's not going. E.T., you have a wonderful uh, week until next week. E.T.